What is going on people of the Smiles Society? Matt here from mksmiles.com and in this video we're going to be turning this into this. Or in other words, we're going to deploy this. In this, we have everything that we did in the previous videos. We're gonna put it all together so it looks like this nice finished product. The Sonoff Basic Smart Plug is a cheap DIY smart home device that I show you how to make, which means there are four videos. Demo, hardware, software, and deploy. This is the fourth video, the deploy video, where we're gonna put everything together and install it into the real world, or in other words, deploy the device. But basically, if you didn't know, the Sonoff Basic Smart Plug is a device where you can turn anything on and off you plug into it. So you would plug it into this end, plug this end into power, and you can turn on and off whatever is on this side. And this is all controlled from OpenHab, Home Assistant, Google Home, uh, Amazon Echo, and through your mobile devices. For more info and to see it in action, check out the demo video, which I'll have linked in the card in the top right of your screen. The brains of the Sonoff Basic R2, like most devices, is on a PCB. A company that does great PCBs is PCBWay. PCBWay mainly specializes in three things, PCB prototyping, PCB assembly, and SMD stencil. They have low prices and all their stuff is high quality. They also have fast turnaround times and fast shipping. If you use the cash code on the screen now, you can get $5 off your order. So head on over to PCBWay.com and check them out. And I thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's go over what you're going to need to finish up the Sonoff Basic Smart Plug. An extension cord of choice. I chose this two foot waterproof uh, extension cord. A push in joiner where you can push in a cable on both sides to connect them together. A small flathead screwdriver. A Phillips screwdriver. Wire cutters. Wire strippers. And a razor blade. Links to all parts and tools are on my website, link is in the description. But for your convenience, at mksmarts.com shop, you can pick up a kit with all the parts you need to make this Sonoff Basic Smart Plug. The only thing not included with this kit is the extension cord. I'll leave a link to different extension cord options in the description below. I don't include the extension cord for two reasons. I ship worldwide and different countries use different plugs. And so that way, I leave it up to you to decide what you want on the end. For example, you can either put an extension cord on the end with like seven plugs. You can put a single plug on the end. You can make it waterproof, non-waterproof. The options are endless and I want to leave the choice up to you. I don't have many kits available, so if you want one, go ahead and head on over. I also have an assembled option where I will put it all together for you, everything that we did in the hardware video. So all you have to do is do what we're going to do next in this video, which is connect the extension cord. In addition to that, I have an option where I can flash the Tasmoda firmware for you. So all you have to do is connect it to your server of choice, either Home Assistant or OpenHab. And I'll flash the Tasmoda firmware regardless if you choose assembled or not. If you pick up a kit, you can follow along with the video series. So head on over to mksmarthouse.com slash shop. Oh yeah, I have fast USA shipping. Speaking of links, follow at mksmarthouse on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat because that's where I give sneak peeks on future videos and post things a true smart home enthusiast would enjoy. From now on, every device that I show you guys how to make, I will be giving away. So I will be giving away a kit to make your very own Sonoff Basic. Uh, to enter the giveaway, it's very simple and it's 100% free. The link is in the description. There are many ways to get even more entries. So you have a big chance of winning and I wish everyone who participates good luck. All right, now let's turn this bucket of parts into something usable. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our extension cord of choice and you wanna line it up so you have about half. Once you have half, then you wanna take your wire cutters and cut right down the middle. So that way you're gonna have two even lengths. There we go. So now I have two ends of the cable and each one is uh, the same length. Next, take your razor blade and you're gonna wanna score around so that way you have the cable exposed. So I'm gonna do about two inches and you just wanna run it right around the cable to expose it and then just slide it off. 
and we have three cables exposed. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Next, grab the enclosure and loosen both ends of the wire glands. And then you can grab the sawn off. Make sure the green and blue wire are going around the button. Then put the sawn off into the case. And when you put it in, make sure you can still click the button. As you can hear, there's still a clicking noise. That means the button still works and it's not being pressed by anything. Cause we don't want to, we don't want any interference with the button. Then just put the back of the sawn off case back on. And so that way this is complete. The way this is gonna go inside the case is like this. So we have the input here and then we have the output here. So let's start off with the input, which is going to be the voltage. So then you can remove the sawn off for now and slide the wire into the gland like that and then we can strip the cable so take your wire strippers and strip all the ends of the wire there we go i like to twist the ends so that way everything is all nicely contained so do that for the black and white wires oh yeah this is a warning just um, we are working with high voltage this will be used in high voltage scenarios so proceed with caution and at your own risk of uh, making this device make sure you pay attention and know what you're doing but it's not that hard so these cables are a little bit long so i'm just going to trim them just a tiny bit uh, we'll leave the ground one alone for now okay let's move to the sound off really quickly Take your small flat screwdriver and make sure the terminals are loosened all the way. I like to also go back into the terminals and lift up a little of the flap just so that way I have a nice clear entrance with the cable. Okay, so black is live and white is neutral. That This is for American cable. Uh, your country may have different standards, but for Americans, white is neutral, black is live. So then I'm going to take the black cable, slide it into the terminal, and then tighten it down with the small flathead screwdriver. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the white wire. Just gonna go ahead and got a little bit frayed. Just gonna tighten it down and stick it into the terminal. And once it's in there, tighten it down with the small flathead screwdriver. Bring it in close for you guys. So, White is neutral, black is live, and it's in the terminal. There we go. Now you can take the cover that came with the sawn off, put it over the end, grab the screws, and grab your Phillips screwdriver, and tighten down the cover. You don't wanna to go too tight because these are not threaded, so you could ruin the plastic. It's all nicely in there. All right, so just gonna move that over. Grab the other end, thread it through the bottom of the sawn off. I mean, through the bottom of the waterproof enclosure in through the gland. Let me just move some of these tools over and you can pull it out. And like the other side, we're going to strip the ends of the cable and then twist it to keep them together. All right, all the cables are twisted. Uh, it's a little bit long, so I'm going to shorten them just a tiny bit. Now we're going to go back to the sawn off. And this is why I mentioned to have very long cables. That way you can easily work with it while still in the box. So I'm going to loosen the terminals, stick the screwdriver in to lo loosen the actual metal plates because sometimes they get uh, a little bit stuck and it's hard to push in the cables. Now we're gonna do the same colors. So white is neutral. So I'm gonna put it in the neutral side, tighten it down, and then take the black wire and put it into the other side and tighten it down. Here's the close up. White is neutral, black is live. Now grab the other plastic part of the sawn off, put it over the edge, grab the two screws, and use the Phillips screwdriver and screw it down. So that way it won't come out. The hard part is done. Now you just want to pull on the cables so they go to their corresponding sides. Move this around and pull the sawn off like this. So that way the sawn off is sitting like this in the enclosure. So you want the wires to go on the sides of the sawn off. There's just enough clearance for the wires and just move it like that. So here's the top view. Here is another top view. 
and there it is it's sitting all in there nicely uh, move the cover to the other side the uh, ground wires might get a little bit frayed that's fine just fix them up a little bit now just take your push in connector push one end of the ground into it and then let go of the connector and it's in there nice and secure do the same thing to the other side just push it in just cut it down a little bit push down on the connector and push in the wire and the ground wire is connected and you can just push it down into the case so now you want to push in a little bit of the cable and then tighten the wire glands to tighten the wire glands you simply just keep on twisting them and then that creates a nice waterproof seal around them and there's a lot of tension relief. Do the same thing on the other side, push in the wire just a little bit, angle it for how you want it, so there we go, that's good, and then just tighten down the wire gland. All you have to do is simply just keep twisting the top. So both wires are now secure. Now simply just bend the ribbon cable down out of the way and close up the lid. You may need to push it around a little bit, and there we go. Grab the screws from the lid, Grab a Phillips screwdriver and tighten it down. I like to do this in a cross pattern so that way it tightens down evenly because there is a gasket in here. And that's it, it's fully complete. It's all nice and closed, we got the ends on it and it's fully controllable. So let's test it out just by plugging it into the wall for now. All right, so I've gone ahead and plugged in the plug let's see if it works oh it does so i can hear the relay clicking and i can see the blue button turning on all right so now that it is complete let's go ahead and deploy it into the real world all right so i've gone ahead and plugged in one end of the sound off basic plug into the outlet and then i plugged in the christmas tree into the other end of the outlet so now if i press the button Bam, the Christmas tree turns on, and we can turn it off. Now, I did use this plug indoor, but the power cord that I used is also rated at outdoor. But let's go ahead and see it wirelessly controlled. All right, I have OpenHab open up on this phone. Press the switch. Boom, the Christmas tree turns on. That's actually really fast response time. I'm really happy with that. It's instant. And I don't know if you can see the blue ring uh, where the sound off is down there. Cool. Now let me show you the other sound off that I have installed outside in the outdoor. All right. So over here I have the sound off plugged in. It's in plugged right into the outlet. Uh, it's just upside down right now. And then here we have the three plugs coming out of it. Got the phone right here. We can flick the switch. Turns off all the Christmas lights outside, and boom, they turn on. This is really cool because now we can remotely turn them on and off. Awesome. And we've had this running for a while, and the device has been giving no issues. That is it. The device is fully complete. This has been a very fun series and, a, in my opinion, a very useful device. You can plug this thing anywhere and control anything, especially outside. I'll probably be using these devices every year for my Christmas lights, as well as other things around the house, such as my 3D printer. This Saturday, I will be holding a live stream, so I hope to see you there. In the description, you will find links to all the parts and tools used in this video, as well as a link to mksmarts.com shop, where I have a wide range of smart home devices, such as the kit we featured in this video, uh, blinds controls, LED strips, door sensors, and sprinkler systems and much more. All right, if you found this video helpful, smash like, and if you're a smart home enthusiast like me, then you belong on this channel, so hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or head on over to mksmarthouse.com slash forum.